What's up, everyone? And welcome to Project X Talk Extra, your weekly podcast supplement from Project X Talk. This is a show where we discuss all the stories, movies, anything we want that didn't make the main show. I'm your host, Kevin, aka The Muffin Mon. And today I'm joined for what is probably one of his last videos on the channel, Mr. Alpaca Tom himself. How you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. You uh you, you excited not to make videos anymore? <laughs> I mean, there's no way I'm not gonna make videos anymore. I wouldn't mm -hmm. I wouldn't put it that far. Mm -hmm. okay. But we'll we'll see. We'll see. You know, yeah. I'm sure I'm sure I'll stop in now and then. Mm. Well, I like to hear that. Uh if you are new here make sure to hit the subscribe button if you like the content hit the like button and if you're listening on audio drop us a review or rating over there we do appreciate it but today we are talking about halo the tv series episode number three uh and i've been doing this series review with ethan but he's on vacation so today i've enlisted tom who has watched the third episode as i have and I want to get your overall thoughts on the episode first of all. What do you think of episode three, Tom? Jeez. All right. So the direction that they're going with, it's interesting. So overall thoughts, it's a good episode for this series. But I still have concerns and I guess we'll probably delve into that in a little bit. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, for sure. Um, just my my high level thoughts. I thought it was a good episode. I liked it more than last week's. Uh, I would say I would say episode three is better than episode two, and I think episode one I liked more. I, episode two for me was certainly the weakest episode. I think um, this week was good from a like a from from a writing standpoint. I thought it was fine. It was a fine like drama. Um, I still. And I, I've said this last week. I still don't really feel like this is Halo. <laughs> exactly, and that's that's where my issues come into it. Like I, if I can, look, if I look at it from the outside, like a casual viewer who has no idea what Halo is, yes, I think this was a good episode. I can see where they're set, what they're setting up with this, mm -hmm. and I can see why it would be engaging. But holy, but you're not they, getting the the feeling of Halo. No, like. Cortana isn't Cortana in my opinion, and Master Chief isn't stoic like he's supposed to be. Mm -hmm. He's a uh, way too emotional, and yeah. that I guess that's my biggest issues of this entire episode. Yeah, well let's let's get into the actual meat of the episode. I think this episode is called Emergence, uh, if I remember correctly. I might I might not be remembering that correctly. I thought it was called that, uh, but this episode basically. I, I like the last two weeks I've been going kind of like start at the beginning and then we go through the episode plot points. There was really only like two big plot points in this episode for me. And that was Cortana finally gets introduced to the series. So the episode starts off with Halsey and her, her assistant, who's a creep, by the way. Yeah. He, <laughs> disclaimer. Do you guys talk about spoilers in this? Yeah. yeah no, full spoilers. We're full spoilers. Dude, try to kiss the clone. While she was paralyzed there. Before she died. Get rid, get rid of this guy. <laughs> Before she died. It was messed up. Like, she's about to be murdered. And he's like, oh, let me just lean in for the kiss. And then he almost gets caught. Dude. Creep. What a freaking creep. So, they yeah, they introduce Cortana. Uh, basically, the, the clone Halsey comes out. And she's... The scene with Halsey, I think, is good. Like, I think Halsey throughout the show has been my favorite part. Like, the actress and, like, the, the character in general I've really liked so far. Uh, she's basically like, you know, we're going to we're gonna make Cortana. Uh, and, unfortunately, you got to die for that. So, oh, well. Like, it is it is what it is. So, then they, they do that. They put Cortana in Chief's head. And then Chief wakes up and is like, what the hell is this? Um... And then they have him go touch the artifact more that I'm I'm so sick of hearing about this forerunner artifact at this point. Like, let's move it along. And he gets some more readings and Cortana wants to take full control of his body, which was that a thing in the games or is that like a specific TV plot point? That's specific to this. And also the fact that she got implanted directly into his head. That's also just a TV thing. Yeah, yeah. That's that's like a 
every armor has like the slot for it, and mm -hmm. that's she can actually take full control of them at any time, apparently. And it's weird. She like really wants to do it. Yeah. It's like, let me just get rid of this guy. Yeah, she can like put him in stasis and like knock him out for periods of time. Um, but she does her her directive apparently is to seize control of these like Spartans, and then she would just fight in their like they would lose their consciousness, their being, and it would just be Cortana's, which is different from the T or the the games because in the games, like you said, she just goes in a slot on the back of their their helmets and then she's just an ai that like helps them scan stuff and like sh she didn't get injected into your brain through a needle which completely different i don't I, i'm fine with it it is what it is like it's not a super big deal like okay she's in she's in master chief's head one way or the other i guess but this way she's literally in his head so he touches the forerunner artifact sees more visions of his childhood um and then he goes and talks with the other spartans like i'm reinstated and that scene was like awkward they meet cortana and it's like i don't really know how I, the other spartans have come off very awkward to me they just kind of stand there and like stare you, you get the feeling with them yeah but i you know they they feel more like spartans at least because mm. they're they're more like they're more grounded and just like knowing the command and the order of things. So it makes sense in that sense. So that that one Spartan, the girl that spied on him, is she spying on him because she doesn't trust him or does she like him? I can't tell what it's supposed to be. I have no idea. She's curious about something and I I don't know. I didn't I didn't see it in the way that she likes him. Mm. I guess I, I felt like it was more she thinks something's going on with him. I help for all we know, she probably doesn't have emotion. Uh, she probably removed the emotion thing later, which we have to bring up. Oh, Who yeah, knows? yeah, yeah, yeah. Maybe, maybe she feels different than the, these other guys that we don't know yet. Yeah. So Cortana is supposed to be like a spy watching Master Chief, but Halsey's like, you got to earn his trust. So just go along with everything he wants to do. And one of the things he wanted to do was remove his in uh, his pellet that's implanted in his back, his hormonal suppressant, because he just wants to be able to feel things again. So then we get another scene where Master Chief's just butt naked and stabs himself in the lower back to take out this little pellet. And then he's like, you know what I want to do right now? I'm going to take the train and go listen to some live music. And just apparently that makes him like, oh, my God, the world is beautiful. Like that scene was unneeded for me, I think. Like I get what they're doing, but I don't know. How do you, how do you feel about that whole thing? Yeah, and that's, I guess that's where the big awakening where he's actually able to fully like show all his emotions and what he needs to do. Uh, I it makes sense to me uh, after having that removed. Like you're just gonna experience like a lot of different shifts with your body, and that's mm -hmm. probably what he was experiencing. And then he just look weirdly looked at that uh, that dog for a little too long at the end there. <laughs> he he was really sad that it was crying. He 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 finally was like, I understand why people like pets. Finally, like I get it. Oh my God! Shout out to the train going by. If I don't know if anybody can hear the train, but uh, there's a train, um, just like the one Master Chief took. But yeah, so I get what they're doing to him. They're making him more human because that is basically what we're seeing every episode. Which, like it or not, that seems to be the road they're going down for the show. Was episode one first twenty minutes? He was just a soldier that followed orders and had no emotions. Everything since then is him slowly becoming more and more human, and he's just going to be like a really strong emotional dude now, which, again, not really Master Chief, right? Exactly. And we only see some snippets of like him showing any sort of emotion, and most of that happened like in probably like Halo 4 with Cortana. Mm -hmm. It never has been like emotions outside of like. Anything that's not related to Cortana. It's always been like really locked into their relationship. Uh, yeah. This just opens it up a whole lot more. I'm curious to see what they do with it still, but it's this isn't Master Chief. This isn't the Master Chief I know. Yeah, I agree with that. I agree with that. I've been saying that week after week. Like this, this is 
I'm glad they said this is a different universe, a uh, different timeline, because this is nowhere near the John that I know. Because, listen, I walked around Zeta Halo, and I did not once hear him be like, oh, my God, the beauty of the world, like the, gr the green and the sky. I'm like, uh, he just doesn't like, give a shit. Like, why would he? You know, uh, ooh, uh, I broke my own rule there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm just saying, like, it's it's one thing. I get they have to do it for TV because – and I keep saying this every week, they're doing this because that you need a TV character to be likable. You need to connect with them more on a personal level to tune in every week, as opposed to like a game where you you're taking control of him. Right. Exactly. And I fully agree with that. Yeah. Um, so he takes out his pellet and then he goes back and touches the artifacts some more and he gets more visions and finds out like there's a second piece to this, uh, artifact that the little one will fit inside the big one. Um, and it's on his home planet where he grew up, which then he has to ask Cortana for help finding like, where did he grow up? He learns that like his parents are probably dead from some sort of infection. Um, he looked a little sad about that, I guess he's like, yeah, all right, well, uh, but we gotta go to the planet and get this artifact. And so him and Halsey are setting off on a, on a mission to go to his home planet. And that's kind of all that happened in this episode, right? Unless I'm missing something. Uh, I mean, there's a big other side plot point that's going on. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. We got. We'll touch on that. We'll touch on that. What do you, what do you think about him and Halsey going off though? Like, we'll we'll start there. Uh, what do you mean? Like they're going off to his home planet. Like, do you like that direction? Uh, like, it's kind of. I mean, I, I feel like. It's weird in the fact that there she has Cortana already there to watch over him. That she doesn't have to be there. It seems just like kind of thrown in. Or I'm assuming there's gonna be some sort of confrontation once you know Master Chief figures out that you know he was probably taken away by force at some point mm -hmm. as a child, and you know he'll just go off on her. So I guess that's probably why she's coming along. But besides that, it doesn't really make much sense. I'm just wait like. When do we get to the war? When do we get to Master Chief fighting people? Because outside of the first 20 minutes, it's literally just been exposition dumps and dialogue and walking around, right? Like, it's very, very slow paced at the moment. Yeah, and I mean, I think the next episode is going to change that, though. Look, we know he's going to hunt, he's hunting for that new artifact, and I'm sure the Covenant knows where the hell he is and yeah i hope so hopefully we get a battle like episode one because that's the besides that we haven't had any action really mm -hmm. except for what we'll talk about now because i did forget this from the episode so we had the uh covenant girl um we got her backstory opening the episode actually i totally forgot that this was a thing just because i'm like I don't know how I feel about this this girl <laughs> at the three episodes in so far, but she basically tells, uh, you know, it, it basically starts with her. She was uh, some sort of orphan on a junk planet. She watches her friend, who she was romantically interested in as a child, uh, get murdered in front of her. And then the Covenant come and is like, the, we're going to take you because they have some glowing stick that's like, she's the she's the thing we're looking for. So that's how we know she ended up with the Covenant. She hates humans because they abused her on the junk planet and they killed people in front of her. So she she's not a fan of the human race. But she tells the the uh, the council on high charity, you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna go get the artifact. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill Master Chief if I gotta kill Master Chief. No big deal. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my business. And then she she sets off and she tricks a UNSC space ship into letting her on board and then i think we get what is supposed to be the 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 middle parts of hunters going around the ship and killing everyone that was because in the in the, when she was on the covenant ship you can see the hunter there with like their armor you can see their shin pads mm -hmm. i didn't know they worked that way but <laughs> i mean i guess <laughs> i don't do they work that way i don't know if they do i've never seen it but so <laughs> i guess now it does so what yeah so like i thought when we got that scene i was like okay we're gonna get hunters like that's gonna be sweet we haven't seen hunters on screen yet we've only really seen elites and um and the uh the oh my god uh, i forget the council people the high charity uh 
members. I forget what their actual uh, name is in the covenant, but um, I thought we were going to get hunters. And then we got these weird little intestine snakes going throughout the planet, grabbing people. And I was like, this looks more like the flood than it does the covenant right now to me. Um, I don't know if hunters are work that way though. Like I always assumed those were like cartilage, just connecting their body parts together. Right. No, I no, I think that is how they work though. Really? It's like interconnected, like worms. Okay. But I thought they had to be like one symbiotic unit for them to work. Interesting. So, I mean, it's a new take, I guess yeah. it's, it's gross. Yeah. Yeah. It was- <laughs> Uh, yeah, so she kills everyone on the ship and tries to find out where uh, they took the artifact. Um, and she couldn't do that. So then she was like, I'm, I'm leaving the ship. Uh, and that was literally all she like. She she failed. She killed a bunch of people, but she didn't accomplish anything. So I don't know. I don't really know how I feel about her. Uh, Ethan brought up last week that he, th- he thought that this girl was going to be Master Chief's sister. And I'm glad that that doesn't seem to be the case. It still can be. I guess it could be. I mean, it, we don't know. She could have been taken away at a younger time and brought to that junk planet after they evacuated everyone, for example, and the parents got left behind. It could. I really I mean, hope it is. All, all we know that is her and Master Chief seem to have the same ability where they can interact with these artifacts. Mm-hmm. So maybe there's some genetic stuff required for that uh i I don't know they'll probably explain it eventually yeah well overall i think the episode was fine like it's it's good uh i'm still gonna i'm i'm excited for next week and that's all i can ask for from the show is to like keep me interested week after week and coming back they haven't done anything super egregious which they could have because a friend of the show ty guy travis uh over on bitcast he was like I think they're going to make Cortana human and then him and Master Chief or or her and Master Chief are going to have sex. (laughs) I was like, please don't let that happen. I'm glad that didn't happen. Yeah, that would have been travesty. Uh, There was also a subplot on top of that still. The the one with the the Asian girl. And uh, what's the what's the other Spartans? Oh, Soren. Yeah. Oh, my God. They have so many like little plots <laughs> that like I just do, like this one especially I don't care about it. Yeah, all. I'm like uh, okay, she's in a she wants to go to I guess her Ma- home planet Madrigal. Again. Yeah, Madrigal, and yeah. You, you know he's like I'm gonna get paid either way. You have a she's bounty like, in your head. <laughs> she, she's like I'm gonna rise up, gonna kick some ass. Um, I, I don't. I'm not inspired by her. No. Uh, she's there. I. I can care less about this specific character. That's literally the best way to describe her. She's there. That's <laughs> that's all I can say. And Soren, I don't care anymore about you. I'm sorry, bro. Like you're you're fine, cool, but like I don't care that you're some defective Spartan. Just just go away. We don't need this. I'm done with these people. So I guess they're gonna go try to free her planet from uh, from the new leader over there, but. I don't know, man. I just have a hard time caring about anything outside of like Master Chief and the Covenant storylines. Yeah, to me, that's the weirdest part about this entire thing that they're actually trying to make like a human enemy on top of like what the main enemies has always been the Covenant. So it's like, okay, Mm -hmm. I guess we'll see where it goes. (laughs) I guess so. But uh, that's all I got. Like I said, good episode overall. Um, certainly better than last week. Uh, didn't go in an awful direction, but we need to pick up the pace with some of that. We need more action. We need more less exposition dumps, in my opinion. I agree. Uh, Tom, where can people find you if they want to interact with you? More? Uh, find me on Twitter at Alpaca Tom. I also play on the Xbox, way too greasy. And yeah, party up, maybe. <laughs> She knows. Your parrot knows. Oh, your bird. I don't know if it's a parrot. Probably not a parrot. That'd be weird. Um, you can find me at the Muffin Mon. It's a one instead of an I and an O instead of an A. Follow us at Project X Talk to stay up to date with all our latest videos. Come join our Discord server. We're trying to get it populated so we can have some more chats with you guys. The link is down below. But until next week, for episode four, we'll see you. Goodbye. <laughs>